Welcome to the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen, where we share gourmet recipes at a low budget wonder. Now check this out. Here I've got several sheets of pig skin I picked up at my local Asian market. As you can see here, the fat has already been removed and we're left with nothing but the skin. Otherwise we'd have a thick portion here that would need to be removed if you were making pork rinds. But since these have already been machined, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. Laying the skin face down, you want to go ahead and slice and portion out your pieces. You can have fun with this and cut them into various sizes if you prefer, but I like to just stack them one over the top of another and cut congruent slices. It really doesn't matter how you do it. As you can see here, they're going to be different sizes no matter what. Some smaller, some bigger. What you want to avoid, however, are pieces like this. Sometimes the edge of these sheets is really dark, dried out, and rough. More like a piece of leather. All you have to do though is cut that out. If you don't cut these out of your bunch, you're going to end up with pieces that practically break your teeth. I'm sure we've all had that in the bottom of a pork rinds bag. So cut these out. Now in a hot pot in the stove you want to boil some water and add some salt to help break down the collagen in the skin. Now add the pieces. And you want to go ahead and just get in there with a the spoon and separate everything. Make sure none of the pieces are sticking together. And You're going to cook these for about 30 minutes. The water will turn all murky on you just like you're cooking pasta. But that's normal. But what you're going to end up with here is pieces that are soft through and through just like a noodle. And just like cooking noodles, you want to go ahead and strain out all the liquid. Cold shocking the pork skin isn't necessary, but I do like to run cold water over the pieces so I can handle them with my hands. And once I've got them cooled down enough, I just add them to an old cookie sheet and get them all spread out evenly. Now you need to decide how you want to season your pork rinds. If you want to use salt, and salt only, that's fine. But sometimes, for a little kick, you can add things like pico de gallo. Or what I like to use, which is this adobo with garlic in it. And once I've shaken a good portion over the entire sheet, I mix them up with my hands. Then spread them out again. Then take them straight to the oven. And you want to bake on your lowest settings. Mine bakes at 170 degrees Fahrenheit and I bake for four hours. Or until they look something like this. I'm pretty certain you could just use a dehydrator if you wanted to dry these out. But all you gotta do now is drop them in a deep fryer and fry at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for just a couple minutes. Before no time they just start popping up like popcorn kernels turning into popcorn. And if you've left any fat on the back of these pork rind pieces, you'll know it because they won't puff up. It's good to shift and push these things around a bit and make sure that oil is hitting all the pork rind. Otherwise they won't fluff up like this and they'll be hard and chewy. Here's an example of two pieces that didn't fluff up. One still has the hard skin, so this one didn't puff, and this one still had some fat left on the other side, so it didn't fluff up either. But it's never a bad idea to go ahead and shake on some more seasoning. Even though it's baked in, a lot of it comes out in the fryer. You want these to taste delicious. And there you have it, pork rinds right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.